Expect Him to bless you. He will not bless dark. We just read, there's what? No darkness in Him. God is light and in Him is no darkness. 1 John. Don't think that you can mix darkness and light anymore in your life because you can't. You shouldn't even want to. Amen. Mm. Shouldn't be a desire yeah. anymore. Yeah. God's been dealing with man. Something He says, if your old nature is crucified, how can those thoughts even get in your head? Oh. <laughs> I said, I got some more crucifying to go through. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and he's, you know what? He revealed it to me. Now he's helping me with it. You know why? Because I'm not afraid to go to him and say, listen, I'm still having some issues here. The side of my head, this isn't of you. I have the mind of Christ. Why? So the revelation I got the last two weeks, he just keeps speaking my word. When you hear so I shared something with David Welsh the other day. What he said, you know, he's been helping me start my day right. When I roll over in the morning, I look at the ceiling. And right away, he starts giving me scriptures to meditate on before my feet hit the floor. Because I ask for help so that my mind and his mind are one before I even go get to my knees. If you ask for help, God will help you. Stop thinking you can do something on your own. It says, apart from me, you can't do nothing. Why do you think he tells you that? Because he knows you're weak. He knows you need his strength. He knows this stuff already. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. If you have your Bibles, turn to where we at? Somewhere. I'll get through this. No, don't go here, but go to in Colossians 1.19, the fullness of the Father dwells in who? His Son. Remember that's so important because then you'll know that the Father and the Son, the Holy Spirit, it says it over and over, are one. And you have the fullness of the Godhead actually living in you. It says that in Colossians. Because all the fullness dwells in bodily form in Christ, and Christ is in you. See, so you already have the fullness of the kingdom dwelling in you. So why aren't you victorious over every circumstance? Yeah. Yeah. It got quiet. <laughs> if you have your Bibles, turn to John, the 14th chapter. This is that oneness and the authority of His name that I want you to see right now. He threw this in late yesterday, before we close out with a few things. It's so important that you see the oneness but the three workings of God. Remember, God the Father has the Father's heart for all of salvation. He sent Jesus to spread the kingdom. The kingdom came from heaven. It says, let thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God is in you in the fullness and its power and its authority. You belong to a kingdom separate from America. Do you, realize, you realize you you're a, you belong your allegiance should be to Christ first and not to a country right. if you're a Christian do I love America of course have many Americans die fighting for our freedoms you bet they're trying to take them away but like I said I don't look at what the government's doing you know why because the Bible says the gun you know who has the final say in this I've read the end of the book he has the final say so mm -hmm. this is still his country yes. he gave America to be one nation under God be a nation that worships Him and is thankful. We're going to go back to being thankful to God. He's going to force us to. Yes. Amen. Amen. Does God do it? No. He allows it. He allows things to happen because what He wrote is going to happen. This has to come to pass. That's why when He says, meditate on my, my words day and night, you'll be like trees planted by rivers of living water. You'll bear fruit in season. Your leaf will never wither. Whatever you do will prosper. He says that because you need to be in this book. When you're in this book more, what happens out here won't bother you. Because it says over and over again, I'll guard you going out and you're coming in. I'll protect you from all evil. I'll give my angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Protection, protection, Amen. protection. No matter what's going on out here, you got protection. That's right. When you know that Jesus is faithful, He is the living Word. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. hallelujah. Verses 7-9 to in John 14. This is him talking to Philip. They were still doubting him. All this time, all the miracles, everything Jesus did, they still didn't get it. <laughs> it says, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, Philip still doesn't get it. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father. It is sufficient for us. Jesus must have been scratching his head right about now. <laughs> Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? John 10.30, I and my Father are one. He proved over and over 
and over. I don't do anything except the works that the Father does through me. He was saying he was one with the Father from the get-go. When he says, greater works than these I will also do because I go back to the Father. Remember something, the Son came right out of the Father's bosom and came to earth. When you read that in John, he came right out of his bosom. See, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, here, here's my Son. Took him right out of the bosom of the Father and sent him to earth. Ooh. It says that in John. It's so powerful that we get a hold of who came. Did he come as a man? Yes. Was he always God? Yep. He's never not been God. Oh, well, he wasn't God when he came. Yes, he was. Yes, he was. He's never not been God. Before all this was created, he was God. The Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were planning it all out before he ever got here. Before he even said, let there be light, God was very busy. He was writing and doing our lives out. The problem is we're not walking in the fullness of what God gave us because we don't know the authority of His name. You know why you bow to circumstances? You know why you bow to people? Because you don't know the authority of His name. He put His stamp of approval on you the day you said, I need you as my Lord and Savior. You confessed your sins to Him. You said, come into my heart and save me, O God, and take over my life. Here, I now belong to you. You got your stamp of approval right there that day, that split moment in time, when all of heaven blew the trumpets because your name was sealed in the Lamb's Book of Life. It can never come back out. Now God owns you. Let Him take full possession of you today so that you know the power and the authority of the name that lives within inside of you. His name is written on your heart. His name is written on you. It's inscribed in there. He put His own name on you. Oh! Man, when you know the power that you belong to, you'll never bow to another circumstance or person or country again. You will bow under the name of the Lord Jesus yes. Christ only. Only. Never bow your head and hang down anymore. Rise up and smile. I belong to Jesus. Yes. And proclaim it everywhere you go. Yes, people are going to curse you out. They're going to make faces at you. They're going to say you're crazy. Well, praise God. Because the more bold you are and the more you lift up the name of Jesus, the more His grace is going to abound. The more you're going to feel His strength and His presence. And when you start being bold for God, I'm not saying be disrespectful. Like when I was a young Christian, I ran around hugging everybody, telling everybody Jesus loved them. And the stuff that came back at me, I had coming because I didn't have any wisdom yet. I couldn't imagine anybody not wanting to be loved by God. That moment in time when I surrendered and I felt that Jesus loved me mm. and He died for me, I couldn't imagine any soul not wanting that. It was beyond my comprehension in one moment's time on a Sunday morning to realize such a holy God loved me. I did, that's why I ran out the doors and started hugging everybody. I literally was out of control. I couldn't believe that somebody didn't want to feel the power of that love. The warmth, the affection I felt from heaven. I just was beyond my, how could you not want this? And it was, they ran from it. I had been running from it for 37 years. But when I had that encounter with Jesus, when you had that encounter, and you felt that love and that mercy and forgiveness of Jesus Christ, Amen. every one of these souls needs it out here. Hallelujah. There's too many of your brothers and sisters. You know where a lot of your ministries, bless you. You know where a lot of your ministry is going to be, be to? The brokenhearted Christians that have been so wounded by the body of Christ. They've been kicked. They've been knocked down. We're going to help restore them. They're going to be the army that God's going to raise up. Well, I'm not the only one that's seen that in the Spirit. I've had too many people confirm those dreams and visions. Because there's a lot of people God's getting ready. But we need to show them again. You didn't miss it. You didn't fall short. You just wandered for a while. Now it's time to come back into the fold and back into the fullness of what you called for. Because the wisdom you learned out there, you found out that world's never going to be the answer. Jesus is the answer. He is our only hope. In hope alone do we believe in Jesus Christ. Make sure your hope is not in man or the promises of man because you will be a heartbroken person till the day you go home and be with Jesus. Because God's promises are yes and amen. Man's are maybe, could have, and conditional. God's are not. See, He is truth. Mm. Hallelujah. Amen. When you know the power and the authority of Jesus' name in John two, in James 2.19, you believe that there is one God you do well. For the demons believe and they tremble. Do you realize when you lift up the name of Jesus, 
and you know the authority of that name, and that you're one with him, and you have his same authority, they tremble. See, even today in the back, there was a real discouragement and stuff, but I just kept praying through it until he fell. And he healed anyway, didn't he? Yes, he does. Because nothing can stop Jesus, Jesus from loving us and healing us and taking care of us. He can't. It can't happen. God cannot deny himself. Or that whole book is a lie. And I know it's the truth. I've met him. And I know he's faithful. I know he's true. I know he heals. See, but we've got to get that in our heart. Because Jesus, Jesus is above everything that this world says. Like I said, it's amazing. We This country has gone into a place of darkness because they've got their eyes so fixed on a TV screen, on a news station. I mean, we didn't put the news on this week, did we? This last couple of days. <laughs> because there's nothing there. Because everything they're saying is written already. It's written. This is where man's going to go, but those who follow me will get the crown of life. You've already been crowned. You realize that? He crowned you with loving kindness and tender mercies, it says in the Psalms. You're crowned with it. He crowned you with it. You're clothed with Christ Jesus. Oh man, when you get a hold of who you are and the authority of the name of Jesus, you should be speaking at every circumstance in your life and getting the same results that Jesus got. If you got a storm, don't make a big whoop de doo about it. Say, peace be still. Jesus said that to 20 foot waves. That was like an ice skating ring. <laughs> no, if you realize those storms, if you research that over there, because they were below sea level, and the mountains were here, those winds would come down, and within minutes, you had 15 to 20 foot waves coming at you. It's that quick. Because the pressure would change because they were below sea level, and that air would come down. So Jesus knew that. He set them all up anyway. They rebuke them for their lack of faith. I just fed all these people. I raised the dead. The blind see. The lame walk. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. I multiplied the fish. I've done all that. Amen. And you're worried about some 20 foot seas. Really? Thank you, Jesus. They woke him up for it. He said, peace be still. He didn't get up there and rebuke the devil. He didn't do anything. He just went, peace be still. I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Think about what Jesus is telling us. The name of Jesus makes the storms be still. You have a lot of storms in your life because you allow it. When you see a storm coming, sometimes you'll allow the storms because you're you're doing your thing. You're not doing his thing. You got to do his thing, and then the storms aren't so rough. The seas stay kind of calm. It's when you start doing your thing that the waves get a little bit bigger. That's when you take a step back. I was talking to my wife the other day. I tell people all the time. You hear him talk, oh, the devil this, the devil that, the devil this, the devil that. No, 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 no. Why don't you get quiet and ask God why stuff's going on? It ain't got to do with him and it ain't got nothing to do with the devil. It's got to do with you. It's got to do with you. Stop blaming the devil and stop blaming God for something you caused. I got that this week. Guilty. Let's get to some exciting stuff. Acts, the fourth chapter. The name of Jesus. The name of all every name. Oh, hallelujah. Now they're about to get thrown into prison here in this chapter. And actually what was amazing is that it was like 5,000 people. I was rereading that this morning. There was like 5,000 people had just gotten saved. What's happened, church? They didn't have TVs. They didn't have microphones. They didn't have PA systems. They didn't have satellite. They didn't have internet connection. 5,000 people just gave their hearts to the Lord. What's happened? You've forgotten why you're here. In our spiritual walk, yes, the church has gotten lazy. We've gotten lazy in our mission. Your mission statement is, Lord, bring them to me so I can lead them into your arms. Then you're going to have divine appointments. Verses 8 to 12. <clears throat> then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, 
Peter was so cool. He went from running from the cross. Boy, he became as bold as a lion, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> he denied him, ran from the cross, and then he becomes as bold as a lion. That's why he says, wait till you're endued with my power, and that I'll give you my nature. That infilling of the Spirit, you now have God's nature in you. Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, rulers and people and elders of Israel, if we this day are judged for a good deed done to a helpless man, by what means he has been made well, let it be made known to you all and to all the people of Israel <clears throat> that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, ooh, talk about a correction, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man stands before you whole, not healed, whole. Whole means every part of your life has been restored. Wholeness is what Jesus brings you. Not just fixing Karen's knee or whatever Maria and Sue had. No, He's making you whole. Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically, financially. You will prosper in all those areas. You will be made whole from all the years that were taken from you. God doesn't want one area of your life left out that you're not made healed and whole. In every area of your life. Oh, thank you, Jesus. This is the stone which was rejected by you builders, which has become the chief cornerstone. Nor is there salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. The name of Jesus brings salvation. It breaks the bonds of darkness to keep you from your eternal destination in hell, which all mankind earned and deserved. But salvation in Jesus' name breaks that. If you realize the name of Jesus breaks that, now you're sealed, drawing your way to heaven. But now there's no more guilt. Now there's no more shame. Now there's no more condemnation. That should free you up just the way you see yourself right there, because none of those words line up with what Jesus did for you. See, if anybody comes and brings any kind of condemnation, judgment, or guilt or shame to you, rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Use that name, Jesus, right? I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Because your Father in Heaven didn't send the Son to save you so that you could ever be condemned or feel guilty. You know you should never feel guilt. When you do something wrong, you know what God's going to do? He's going to convict you. It says the Holy Spirit convicts us of sin. Never condemns, never judges. Never puts shame or anything. You are not, you can't be shamed anymore. Those who believe in Him, it says, I'll let you not be shamed. You'll never be begging bread. You'll never be forsaken. You'll never be put to shame. Because God doesn't work that way. You're His child. He come to set you free from every negative thought that you ever thought about yourself. Any negative word that somebody has spoken to you. At the name of Jesus, those words are broken in the power of them. You're not going to see yourself in His likeness and image until you realize what that name of Jesus did for you. It made you a whole new creation. Your old DNA is gone now. You have a new DNA, and that DNA is Jesus. Yeah. You got Jesus' DNA. That's how you get healed, folks. I don't heal people, but Jesus in me, His DNA, His life comes out to touch people, and they get touched and they get healed. They get made whole again. Because I speak the Word of God with authority, just as you all have been given permission. God has given you that as an inherited child of God. You have all the authority Jesus had, so why don't you use it? It's not for me. It's for everybody that goes by the name of Jesus. It's amazing how many Christians think of there's a select group of people that have this special power and authority. Nowhere in the book does it say that. It's not in there. It says, all who believe in me, all who believe in me, these signs, wonders, and miracles are going to follow you. And not only that, he's going to establish you that you're his child because he's going to do signs and wonders and miracles through you. He says, I'm going to establish you. His word is established in you by what he does through you. Stop looking for somebody to go out and do what you were called to do. Don't wait around for other people to do what you were called to do. We're called to go out and make a difference in this world. <coughs> So I like Grefful Gala's title of his ministry, World Changers. You should be thinking world changes. Forget Perump, that's small fries. It's just little town. God can fix this in a heartbeat if the church rises up. If the church rises up. If the church rises up. And it's power and authority that God's given us. And we start speaking life into this valley. You go out and you say, Lord, put somebody in my path every time I go out. So I can, does it happen that way all the time? No. 
Because some days they just think already. But be available to the Spirit to lead you and guide you. Stop looking for a ministry to go do it. You're called to go out into all the earth and preach the Word. Amen. It's not for a select few people. It's for all that are born again believers in Jesus Christ. Romans 1.16, the power of His name. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. Everyone who believes. There's power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Power. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You need to start speaking with power. Thank you. I have given you all power and authority Ooh, to trample serpents and scorpions over all the power of the enemy. No harm shall befall you. Hello? Yes. What part are we missing here? You've been given it. Why aren't you using it? You talk about a Christmas present that never stops giving. Think about what God says when He says that in Luke 10, 19. You have been given all. Not sometimes, not you got power for this, you got power for that. No, you've been given all power and authority that Jesus had. Why are you not using it in your life? Why are you not speaking it? Why are you not speaking it? Why are you not prophesying over you? You know how you prophesy over your life? You pray this word over yourself every day. You pray this word over you every day. And you know what? When you speak the name of Jesus, every yeah. demon will tremble. Mm, yeah. Hell should be afraid of you. Yes. Hell was afraid of the church when it started. That's why he tried to have everybody put in prison. That's why they were cutting their heads off. That's why they were all being martyred. But the more they persecuted back then, the more the church grew. The more signs, wonders, and miracles came. The more God's kingdom spread out. Because they weren't afraid of death. Death didn't faze them because they knew the eternal glory that awaited Amen. them. Because they were children of the Most High God. They knew what Jesus had done for them. That first church was such an example. Where did it go? You know where it went to? Programs, works of the flesh, and all the other nonsense that goes on. Yes. I'm telling you, it's time for you to go out and be the church, to share the bright morning star, to walk in the power and the authority of the holy name of Jesus. Know who you are again. Stop with all the stuff the world tells you and start believing what God tells you. Separate yourself from this world and be married to Jesus again and then watch your life change. Oh, hallelujah. Mm. Jesus can never divorce us, you know that? <laughs> Amen, that's good. Hmm? You know why? Because it says nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. You need to stop looking back. You need to stop dwelling on what happened. Like I said, we went to go see Jesse Duplantis last month and it was so good because he says, why are you carrying your past with you? It's too heavy. Why are you dwelling on what you used to be? Because you're not that person anymore. You're a new creation in Christ. Start seeing you as a new creation, and where you've been won't even be a remembrance anymore. When I'm out witnessing, if I run into troubled people that are on drinking and drugs and doing stuff, of course I bring up what God delivered me from. Of course I do, because I've been in their shoes. And if you've been out in those streets, and you've been homeless, you've been hungry, eating out of cans and all that stuff, you can sympathize with these people because you've been there. Okay, so then I tell them what God, what God delivered me from, not what Dennis delivered himself from, because I didn't have delivered myself. I couldn't. I couldn't because I didn't have the strength. I was human. But God. But God did. So I do use where I've been when I'm witnessing. But as far as that thing, He died. He's not allowed to come back. I'm not praying for that resurrection. No, no, no. You give your old life resurrection power when you dwell on it. You feed it, and then your old nature starts to come back. Do you know that? Uh-uh. Meditate on His. Why do you think He says meditate on this day and night? Let not my word depart from your mouth. Why do you think God gives us such an instruction from beginning to end to meditate on who He is? You want to walk in divine power? Just keep reading the Gospels over and over again. Read the book of Mark. Immediately he was healed. Immediately healed. Immediately healed. Immediately healed. Immediately. He used that word immediately in Mark, probably in the first six chapters, about 30 times. God, and Mark is one of the books where, chronologically, that's how the miracles happen. His was right in order. Boom, boom. That's why the book is boom, 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 boom. What a testament to who God is. 
but that same God lives in you. Why are you not seeing immediate results? Because you don't believe. Because when you speak the Word of God, expect the results that Jesus got. He gave you that authority. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Psalm 145, verses 2 and 3. I will bless you. I will praise what? Your name forever and ever. Great is the Lord. Great that you be praised. His greatness is unsearchable. He threw that in last night. I will bless the Lord every day. I will praise what? His name. Start praising His name again. And I'm telling you, whatever's going on in your life, let me tell you something. He'll deal with it. We try and be God in our circumstances and we're not equipped. There's only one God that can fix everything. His name is Jesus. When you start blessing His name every day, your days are going to change. Like I said, all I did was ask for some help when I get up in the morning. Because that's usually when you're, you're tired, you're coming out of your sleep, your mind starts to wander. Oh, what do I got to do today? I said, Lord, I'm struggling in the mornings. So what happened these last couple of weeks? All of a sudden, my eyes roll over. I look at the ceiling. I start hearing scriptures. See, when you meditate on this word every day, you know what you're going to hear? You're going to hear His voice. Because He speaks through His Son, who is the living word. We read it today. They spoke through the prophets. Now He comes to speak through the Son. The Son wants to speak to us today. But He wants to speak to you through His word. Why are you not being strengthened? Because you're not letting Him speak to you through the word. Let the Word come alive. Give God permission to speak to you. You know why people miss what they're called to? Because they don't let the Word show them what their calling is. The Word will speak to you where you're called to go, what He wants to do with you. Because everything He's going to do with you is written in that book. It's not so. It's not a self-help book. And I'll tell you, a lot of times people say, well, you got to pray and fast and all this other stuff. No, you don't. Meditate on the Word. It'll speak. It speaks loud and clear. Why do you think they got all those bumper stickers out there? The Ten Commandments are not multiple choice. <laughs> yes. You know why they want the Ten Commandments down out of every building, every school? Because they speak. They're alive. Yeah. His Word is a... Ooh. His Word is alive. And anything that represents holiness and righteousness and truth, the government's trying to get rid of. Because the more the truth gets out there, the more the government's going to go away. Because the Ten Commandments are alive. That's why they don't want them. Because they have to look at them. And those words are going to speak to them. Thou shalt not. And we don't have a government that likes to hear you shall not. But let me tell you something. The one who wrote those Ten Commandments, he's coming. And he's still speaking, and they don't want to hear. But they will hear, and hopefully they've repented by then. So I said, pray for your leaders. Too many of them say they belong to God, and they do not. They're not going to answer to me. They're not going to answer to you. They're going to answer and stand before Jesus Christ. This is His universe. This is His planet. This is His country. You are His children. Praise the name of Jesus. Yes. Lift up the name of Jesus and start walking with the power and the authority of Jesus' holy name that you've been given as a gift. Amen. Yes, Lord. Stop trying to earn from God and just receive in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. Amen. She starts to play piano, especially the ones that were touched physically, Sue, Maria, Karen. You start seeing yourself the way Jesus does. Healed and whole again. He's not even going to replace your organs. He's going to make them brand new. See, the thing is, we believe the lies of the devil for so long, they become truth. But truth is here today to set you free. Know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
See yourself as God sees you right now. Healed, whole, and restored to wholeness and oneness. Remember, you have God's DNA in you. And Jesus was never sick. Because sickness is of darkness and no darkness can be in the light. You have the light, the bright morning star living inside of you. See yourself as healed and whole. See yourself. Picture it. Picture yourself as that vessel. Use your imagination. Say, Lord, show me that picture that you have of me. And He will